Welcome back, it's the Clay Golan. We're in Foundry VTT once again. We are looking at Fandelva and below. We're going to continue building this particular encounter, which is the Cragmore Castle. Now, in the last video, uh, you may have may have watched, may have not. We did all the walls and things. Uh, there was a comment about curtains, um, which actually makes complete sense. Is uh, I've got these set up pretty much as walls um, that are openable uh, like doors. Um, but what's probably better is to not have them as doors, but has them um, have them as walls that don't restrict movement. The idea being is, is that you push past the curtains. You can't see past it. You can't... Uh, so light doesn't pass it. You can't see past it, but it doesn't restrict sounds um, and it doesn't restrict movement. And that's probably a better way of doing it. So thank you for that tip. That makes sense. So it doesn't restrict movement. Uh, it doesn't restrict sound. Yeah, better idea. I like that. That's what I'm doing. So I'm just going to update these quickly. And then we're going to crack on with some of these um, other areas. I've got that left as door. Don't want them to be doors. Uh, and then, we, yeah, we're going to crack on with these other areas and get all these updated and ready to go. Where's another curtain? Here's one. Not many of them. Um, that's another curtain here. Okay, lock door, 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 curtain, 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 door, door, curtain. Okay, good. Right. So, uh, area seven then. This is kind of where we got to. Let's go to our journal. Uh, open our um, spider's web. We want Cragmore Castle. Here is where we were. Just going to move that over there. Make it a little bit easier for you to see. And um, we hadn't done anything with the banqueting hall. So let's uh, just crack on with updating these journals. So again, just got the module open in the other window. I'm going to follow our same pattern as we do as we do for all of these, where we make the readout description nice and bold, um, and then we can shove anything else in underneath that okay so western portion um ends in rubble yep we know about that um but the remainder is still intact now it talks about this passage here being quite narrow so what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to make this uh actually a bit more narrow through there i mean i haven't made it particularly you know narrow or anything anyway but just narrow that off a little bit um okay once it was castle's banquet hall with soaring ceiling 20 feet high two large tables plain benches brass brazier full of glowing coals so we can put they've got glowing coals there so let's put a little bit of light in shall we? we've not done much in the way of lighting recently so let's put put that in uh, now again if I hold down shift I can be slightly more precise which is good uh, now what do we want this to be well first of all uh, let's make it a orangey kind of color for a start um, color intensity turn it down a little bit that will do light animation yep let's pick a flickering things we've got flickering light that works quite well. Uh, I do want to make the radius bigger on this. Let's have that. Um, let's have it five foot uh, by uh, fifteen foot. No, by ten foot. There we go. So it's just going to be again. This room is not dark anyway, so it's just adding a little bit of ambiance to it. Um, and we could even argue that's a bit too too big there. Um, right, color intensity. Yeah, I don't want it to. I'm happy to have it quite low. It glowing coals, nothing else. Uh, we can change the animation intensity for this if we want to. We can make it faster or slower. It's glowing coals rather than a flickering flame. So I'm happy for have that slower pulsing. Um, and I don't think we need to do anything. Constrained by walls, yes. Provides vision, no. Now just bear in mind, provides vision doesn't mean does it provide light to see by because it does provide light to see by. It's literally, does it provide vision capability? No. And you could use that for some kind of scrying device. Um, we don't want to do that. Uh, that's all good. 
All right, so I'm going to leave that in there. That's fine. Do I want to make it a little bit more red? Might make it a little bit, little bit more red actually. Slightly darker. Yeah, I, I like that. That will do. That will do absolutely fine. Do we want to put crack? We haven't got crackling flames. It's glowing embers, so we'll leave it like that. Uh, the brass brazier, full glowing coals, is tucked into one corner. Dirty dishes. Uh, half full stew pots, mouldy heels of bread, gnawed bones cover the tables and those are really well illustrated in this map um, which is good. Uh, several goblins scuttle around. So this holds six goblins and one goblin boss. So let's go to our um, our monsters here. We want to go to our humanoids and we want to chuck out some goblins. A G for goblin. Come on you muppet. So we're going to chuck these out randomly in the room for the moment we can move them again in a second whoops and we can place them around now just looking looking at the scale of this when we put these tokens around they don't re it doesn't really fit the scale particularly well does it You know, two goblins, one side of the table. They've got three chairs there. I'm wondering if we need to change the scale of this whole map. This is supposed to be a castle. And at the moment, these big main doors, you can only get two people abreast. I think I think our scale is probably wrong. Or at least not what we'd want it to be. Um, I don't know. What do you think? What do you, what do you think of the com comments? Have we got the scale right for this? Let's get rid of Haley. Um, have we got the scale right for this, or should we? Should this effectively be half the size? What do you think? You know, one goblin through a door at a time, or are those castle doors? I mean, it's you know, it's not a very big castle. It's a keep, isn't it? Really? Let me know. Let me know in the comments. We'll take a we'll take a vote on it or something and see which way we want to go with it. Um, but also, we have a goblin boss named Yeg. Um, so I'm going to slap a goblin boss out. Um, but I want to update. Now I thought I had. To, we created Yamik specifically. But I want to update this. A because I want to call him Yeg. Because he's a bit more interesting than just any old one. Uh, and also I want to see if I have got an image for him. I'm fairly sure that I do. Uh, that I pulled in specifically and created a Yeg. Um, the question is where have I put it because <laughs> I know I did do one uh, not in there uh, did I put it in I was just in characters that's where you just were you muppet um, did I put it in Fandelva NPCs or was it was I in here there he is Yeg Yeg the chef I knew I had one okay so that's going to be Yeg the chef um, Get rid of that behind. Just want to zoom that in a bit. There we go. Happy with that. Uh, and then we're going to use that for our token. Get rid of this. Pop that behind. And just move Yeg a little bit. That is going to be our Yeg. Okay. Uh, so he's already got the goblin um, stats, which is fine. And we're going to pop Yeg over here. Now, the reason why is because when I run this, and I have run this before, and I've run this not uh, not yet using Foundry, but I've run this encounter um, a couple of times using um, above VTT, the Chrome extension one. Uh, and Yeg is always a much more interesting character than just another goblin um, that they end up parlaying with. I mean, Yeg just wants to get on and do his thing. So he becomes a much more interesting character rather than just another goblin, which is why I wanted to have a specific token. Uh, and one party, they ended up um, deciding that actually they'll take Yeg with them. Um, and Yeg became their personal cook for a while until he got bored uh, and wandered off. So <laughs> I like to do that with some of my NPCs. Um, you know, the yeah, they, they might do something else. Uh, if Yeg is killed, any goblins left alive flee to the east or west, avoiding the trap. So that that area is pretty much done. Okay, nice and easy, area seven. Just need to decide on our scale because, yeah, I'm not, I'm not convinced I'm happy with that. 
Um, all right, so what's the next area we want to do? We need to do uh, area eight. I just uh, quickly look on the other one, check that I'm in the right place. So area eight is called the dark hall. That's area eight. And that is this area here we're talking about. So south of these curtains. Um, so again, um, let's just add on all of the extra bits that we need and then we can worry about filling in the details. Uh, so area nine is going to be the goblin, whoops, the goblin shrine. That's area nine. Thank you very much. Shove that up there. Hmm, update that. Uh, area 10 is the Poston Gate map location. Area 10. Uh, and that is this area here. And then area 11 is the Ruined Tower. I've done something wrong. Uh, area 10, you, right, okay, idiot. This is the Ruined Tower. I thought it was a bit weird, so that's not the Poston Gate, is it? I know what Poston Gate is. It's down here. I don't always follow what I might consider a logical order on maps. Um, it's obviously sort of from the bottom going up, but not quite. <laughs> okay, right. Um, next one. Uh, area 12 is the guard quarters. Okay, map location. This is area 12. Uh, and this is... The guard quarters is in here. And just two more to go, I think. Haunted Tower. Oops, not class summary. Of course, it's number 13. That's by design, isn't it? Uh, that's this area down here which if you recall, it has a locked door on it. Now I've said it's locked because it's actually got a bar across it to prevent um, anybody coming in and out. So they can't just go wandering through that straight away. They'll need to lift the bar. Um, and our final dramatic uh, culmination of this area is the King's Quarters, number 14 which is up here. Okie dokie. Right, so let's go back and start. We've done the banqueting hall, so we need to start with number eight over here, the dark hall. So let's edit that, and straight away we can just do some of this really exciting copying and pasting stuff. You love it. You know you do. Okay, so... Uh, no exterior light, it reckons. I'm okay with not worrying about that too much. Uh, da, 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 da. You've got a whole bunch of stuff to copy and paste over and then work our way through here. So, um, this chamber is home to a Grick. We need a Grick. Have I got a Grick? I do not have a Grick. I'm pretty sure I don't have a Grick. Do not have a Grick. So we're going to go to our SRD content, go to Monsters, open this up, and we can find a Grick. There it is. So I uh, don't want to drag him straight onto the map. I want to drag him across here. Okay, here's a monstrosity. Let's put him in his monstrosity folder, and then we can drag him out over here, just so that we've always got a copy of those monsters to one side. Okay, uh, and of course, if I take that... Um, and we, whoops. And if I wasn't a complete idiot, we can do that, which is good. Um, the special pet of the goblin boss, Lupo in area nine. The 
Grick uh, likes to climb up to ledges hidden in the shadows of the statuary uh, in the higher reaches of the room. It quietly observes intruders to enter the area before dropping down to strike. Characters in the hall must make A. So let's put in a skill check here. And this is going to be skill. Ability equals wisdom. Skill equals oops, uh, perception. DC 14. Uh, check or be surprised. Uh, the Grick knows uh, that goblins are not to be eaten unless Lupo says. Uh, the rest of the Cragmores are terrified of the Grick and hurry through this room, preferably in twos or threes. Uh, a character who examines the chapel decor can make a skill check. Whoops. Uh, ability equals intelligence. Skill equals religion. DC 10. Uh, check to identify the deities that were once revered here. So Ogma, uh, Mistra, uh, and Lathanda, and Timora. Okay, good. Let's put a line in there, and then we can have our development part. If combat erupts here, the creatures from C9 cannot be surprised. Which is fine. And then we've got a treasure section. So the stone brazier contains a mound of coal under which is borrowed a borrowed buried buried a gold statuette of an elf wrapped in a crimson cloth. The goblin hid the figurine a goblin hid the figurine here, hoping his fellow goblins wouldn't steal it. A detect magic reveals that the statue is imbued with divination magic. Um Non-evil, uh, sorry, a non-evil creature grasping the statue can ask it a question and receive a telepathic response as though the creature had cast augury. Uh, once the creature has asked its question and received a response, it can never activate the statuette again. Right, so there's a number of different ways we could handle that. I'm going to purely handle that through role play um, because you can't predict what the question's going to be or anything else like that. Um, my experience is at the level this is aimed at, they don't tend to walk around casting detect magic. Their spell slots are far too precious for them to just randomly use it. Um, so I think that's very unlikely to come up. Uh, so I'm not going to put tons of effort into it. Right, what we want is, uh, let's look at loot and treasure. We want to create this gold statuette of an elf. Um, what do we have similar to that? Is it jewellery? Is it stones and gems? Um, probably not. Let's duplicate candlestick and we'll use that. So we duplicate it. We're going to change it. Uh, so it is gold statue at. Okay. Um, how much did it say it was worth? Uh, 100 gold, which is lovely. I'm going to edit the description. Um, gold statue at of an elf. That's it. That's all I'm going to put. Because are they going to do much with it apart from flog it? No. <laughs> so why bother putting in tons and tons of extra resources and time and effort into doing it when they're just going to go, oh, we'll have that and flog it. Uh, what's the chances that we already have under core data? Um, something like a statuette. We've got fragments of steel ingots. Um, stamped ingots. Da, 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 da. Uh, wood, treasure, stone, metal, materials, leather, gems, currency, cloth, claws, bone. Let's see if we've got under treasure. Uh, anything that looks like a statuette will do. Um, brooch, green, pink. Da, 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 da. Gold, laurel wreath, crowns, cups, dolls, dream catchers, figurine. Uh, figurine idol. See what that looks like. Do you know what? <laughs> That'll do. I don't care. I don't care. It's not an elf. <laughs> and if nothing else, if the players actually 
bother to notice, it will give them a chuckle. All right, so we've got a gold statuette. It's just dodgy as. <laughs> Uh, so if I hover over there, I can just replace that with that. So I've got a direct thing to that, which is good. Uh, wrapped in a crimson cloth. Don't care about the crimson cloth. I can literally read that description to them. All right. Happy with that. I just need to take my gold statuette. And I'm going to create an item pile and I'm going to hide that right on that brazier. OK, so if they search the brazier, they find it. Then I can unhide it. Then they can choose to take it or leave it there. And they will take it. Of course they will. Because they're greedy gits. All players are greedy gits. And they should be. Right. Let's stick this Grick. Um, I'm going to stick this Grick effectively up here. Uh, and hide it. Okay. Because it's going to obviously drop down on the characters. At its convenience. Possibly when one of them goes to go through the curtain or something like that. We will see. Um, so yeah. Uh, and because it's from the SRD, we don't need to update any of the uh, the stats or anything on it. That's nice and easy. Good. Uh, Goblin Shrine. Let's have a look at this one. Uh, this one's quite straightforward. A um, bit of role play to throw in here, but not a, it's not a difficult room to set up. Because remember, you know, a lot of what we're doing is just setting up, purely setting the stage for the action, for the role play, for the whatever else it is. So just because... What we're doing here is quite simple. Doesn't mean it's a simple encounter from an actual play point of view. So this shrine is home to a goblin boss named Lupo. So we need our goblin boss again. So we're going to chuck this one out here. Uh, and this one we are going to rename whoop, as Lupo. Uh, L-H-U-P-O. I wonder how many how many how many other people are pronouncing that name differently. <laughs> Who styles herself as a priest? So we haven't got a brilliant image for that. Um, I don't think the module has an image for Lupo either, which is fine. Um, so we might need to do make some changes. Um, and her acolytes are a pair of goblins. So just let me uh, let me just close that for a second. When we look at Lupo. What does the so the token says goblin? But I want that to say lupo as well. So when we are hovering over tokens, close that. Uh, yeah, I want you. Why have you not got? Did I? What happened to the default resources? Never displayed. I want these. I, why is the default changed? I wonder if it was a little update. I always want the hit points displayed for me. Okay, so I always have, and we know that it does this. It will show them again. It uh, it doesn't always update immediately. Yeah, okay. Um, and I want when hovered. Um, always for owner, I think. There we go. And the reason why I want always for owner because I want to make sure I can tell the difference between the useful characters, as in the one <laughs> useful. What's his name? Hang on, Yeg. That's it. Um, you know the special characters. I want to make sure that I can actually see them and it stands out a bit better. Resources. I'm going to have to go around and change all of these. Um, where's my goblins? Uh, Right, so if I can remember how to do this, I don't do it very often. If I go into here, never displayed, um, I want to go to resources. I want to make sure it's always on for owner, update token, uh, and then I should be able to uh, see, I can never remember which way round to do this because I want to use that as the prototype token. Right, this is what I need to change. Never displayed, always display for owner on there. That's good. Um, token size is okay. Display name, uh, I will always have for owner just because it, that's a good default as far as I'm concerned. Right, so I've updated that. That's good. 
So now, if I get rid of this goblin, when I drag my goblins out, there we go. It's automatically going to have it. Uh, and that's one, two, three, four. That's the default I want. And it was what I had. I don't think I had the names on before, but it was what I had previously um, with the health bar and things. Uh, and it stopped doing it. Quick segue. Give me a second. Just, <laughs> just want to slap all these out again with those health bars. It makes my life much easier. I suppose it's not that important now. Um, if you recall... Blimey, segueing all over the place. Apologies. Uh, if you recall, one of the things that um, I did add on is automatically when they drop below 50 hit points, it marks them as um, as bloodied. Uh, so that player characters also can see... Oh, they've in fact, haley has got it on right now. Stop targeting Haley. Just... So you can see we get this little icon in the corner which just shows that Haley has taken more than 50% damage. So that's how I've decided to do it so that when my monsters are getting a kick in, the players can actually see that while they're still standing, this monster is suffering uh, and is taking you know, a serious kick in there, bashed, bruised, bleeding, cut, whatever it might be. Um, so I perhaps don't need to see the health bar quite so much because that does come up. Um, I don't want the players to see it, definitely. But there we go. That's how I prefer to have mine. Right. Back from the segue. <laughs> we got loophole done. Um, now, what was it saying in that journal? Before I got massively uh, distracted. Um, Shrine is home to the goblin boss. Yep. Um, and her acolytes a pair of normal goblins. So we we'll slap them out. Lovely jubbly. Move them around in a second. They all wear robes uh, over their armour, but none of them possess divine powers. If the goblins heard the characters fighting, blah, 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 blah. Um, fighting the Grick in area C8, which is the dark hall. Hello? Oh, I'm not editing it. Stupid boy. Stupid boy. There we go. Um, we can do that again. The dark hall, thank you. We can slap that in again. Uh, they hide behind the altar and attempt to surprise the characters. Otherwise, all three goblins are kneeling before the altar, praying. A bloodstained cloth covers the altar, um, on which are engraved images um, of the same gods reflected in the decor found in the other area. Okay. Whoops, a daisy. So I'm going to put a line in there. We've got a bit of treasure. We can sort this out. Okay, the chalice and sensor are, ob are art objects worth 180 and 150 gold uh, each, which is lovely. That's nice. Um, so we need to, I can close that now because we've got it over here. These are going to be, see what I mean about the size kind of issue, about potentially shrinking these down a bit. Um, yeah, maybe. Anyway, you guys let me know in the comments about that. All right, so we've got uh, art objects, a chalice and a sensor. Now, I don't think I did either of those. I don't think I've got things like chalices uh, in my loot and treasure. I haven't, um, certainly not in my gems and stones. Oh, by the way, I went through and up, I didn't tell you this. I, I did it all off camera. I did go through, not only did I tidy up my items... <laughs> which were an absolute mess. But I have gone through and added loads of images um, on for the various stones and things like that, so that when they're out, I haven't done all the jewellery yet, um, but when actually people are looking for them, it's kind of there. All right, so um, I'm going to, let's, why not use the candlestick again, duplicate this. Oh, I've, you don't, I looked, ought to, I ought to look in the SRD um, under loot. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for a chalice. I've got chalk. Uh, I'm looking for a uh, sense sensor. Okay, so we can have one of those. Uh, I'm going to dump that on there for the moment. Uh, mustn't do that. Mustn't do that. Must get into better habits. Let's chuck it over here. Um, but we didn't have... So the chalice... 
what could we use instead of a chalice? Hmm, I was expecting to find a goblet or something similar. Okay, um, I'll find I'll find an image for that. Let's get rid of that. So first of all, this sensor. Let's open this up. So this is a worth a hundred. So the sensor is worth a hundred and fifty gold uh, in this instance. Um, and it says, yeah. So it doesn't say what it's made of. Okay, that's fine. We can leave it at that. Uh, usually used in conjunction with blocks of incense to perfume the air. That's fine. Under details, looped type um, art object. That's fine. We don't need to do anything else with that. All right. Um, but what I am going to do is I am going to duplicate it. And we're going to use this to create our chalice, which was worth 180 gold. Um, we can just get rid of that description. Again, it's one of those things that they're not going to be that interested in any details apart from how much it's worth. Uh, right. Goblets, goblets, goblets. Jeweled goblet red. I'm going with that. <laughs> I haven't got time to mess around. <laughs> so I'm going with that. That's what we're going to do. All right. So first of all, this sensor, uh, if I edit this, sensor, I've, come on, behave. I can now pull my sensor um, down from here. Uh, and for the chalice, I can do the same. Bosh, there we go. And we save that, and then we've got links to these in here. Da -da. So that's worth five gold. So I've actually included the wrong, the wrong bloody one. Of course I have. Uh, So if I drag it in this way, there we go, correct one. Yeah, so uh, that's the unfortunate thing. When you've got some duplicate names, you need to be a bit careful, which is why a couple of times, like gold statuette, maybe I'd want to put gold statuette of an elf um, or something like that, just to make that a bit clearer. Okay, so we've got those two things. Now those are on the order here. So let's see if we can shove that as an item pile I am going to I'm going to leave that as it is I'm going to shrink it though I'm going to say can I do this as 0.5.5 whoops I can so I can make it I can, thank you I can make it small um, and I can actually have it dumped on there wherever I like as an actual item uh, open the sheet no configure the pile uh, the reason why I'm doing this delete when empty yes is I would quite like to yeah just an item pile is fine is to get rid of the name Is it that important? No. Can I actually just leave that blank? <laughs> that will do. <laughs> Somebody's going to say you can actually do that properly. Um, great. Please do. <laughs> happy, happy for you to point out my stupidity. Um, but again, a lot of the time it's just speed and just getting these things working okay so 0 0.5 0 0.5 there uh, we know we can do that if i change the name just to one dot that's fine stick it in hold down my shift don't do that don't do that select it drag it hold down my shift and we can dump it there so it just means that those things are actually on the table and they can go pick them up that's nice isn't it Woo. 
Uh, I want to get rid of this giant sensor over here, though. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so they can examine that table. I can tell them what there is. They can pick that stuff straight up from it, double click on it. They can take that if they want to. Um, lovely jubbly, and then it will disappear off of there, which is good. Right, that's the Goblin Shrine done. The Postern Gate. This is quite simplistic. This is just this gate down here. Now, regardless of what you want to do, I've decided that that is actually going to be locked. Um, the amount of times the party come in through this way um, rather than coming in the main entrance and you, and you can't blame them uh, what they tend to do is they come in this way so the last group that I took this through they came in here they snuck their way all the way up here went straight through this door and ended up the first actual encounter they had in the whole damn castle was what's supposed to be the final encounter in here <laughs> just because you know that's what they do of course when it kicked off there then you had the hobgoblins from area 12 joined in and it all got a bit messy um which was great fun for me and that will teach them for skipping half the module but uh <laughs> it just makes it a bit tricky sometimes okay postern gate let's get this bit done uh i've got a sneaky feeling because time is cracking on i i've got into a really bad habit of not actually timing these videos um and just kind of guessing and quite a few of them end up about 40 minutes ish um, which is pure luck and not planning on my point of view but sometimes it does mean I start to lose track of what the heck is going on um, and I don't want this to turn into a three hour epic creation so I think what we'll do is um, after we finish this one because we finished fiddled with a few bits uh, we'll do area 11 and then we'll call this video to an end and then we can do 12 13 14 in the next video which will probably follow um, fairly quickly onwards so this iron door is locked so considering they've said it's an iron door I don't want to have this as heavy wood I want to have this as metal what's that noise well, it doesn't sound particularly metal, does it? What about industrial? I'm industrial creaky? Let's go with that. Let's go with that. Uh, it can be opened with thieves tools and it's successful. Da -da 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 -da. We need a uh, su su successful dexterity... 15 check or forced open well actually I'm, yeah what is the chance i'm not going to bother putting the links in for that it's going to be down to the thief isn't it if they've got one um right so it's either going to be an athletics check strength 15 uh, which we could put that in uh, any attempt to break down the door whether it's successful or not alerts creatures in area seven area c eight an area C9 so if we wanted to we can okay and this is completely unnecessary doing these little extra bits that I'm doing here for the links in the journal um, but there are places where it really really is useful and I just want to make sure anybody who's jumping in and watching these videos who perhaps hasn't watched the rest of the series and bits like that which which is fine of course um, just to realize that we can do this so we've already included skills and stuff uh, and if we just hit save there we go area c7 c8 c9 c12 c13 uh, are all listed in there um, which is good yeah it's all right don't worry i had a I had a bit of a brain fart and the reason why i said i had a brain fart is I've dragged in, for example, I've dragged in area 12, guard quarters. Now guard quarters is just, it's, it's, it's just 12, it's not C12. Yet when I've dropped it in here, here, it's picked up the name, C8, C12. Have I gone mad? I mean, I'm, I, I don't have a problem with it, I'm absolutely fine with it, but what? What? <laughs> Is it because it already had? I don't. I don't know. Anyway, regardless, carry on, onwards and upwards. It's not a problem, uh, and it certainly doesn't affect us in any way, shape, or form. We need to worry about just my poor old brain. Okay, arrow slits. Any characters who pauses to listen um, near the arrow slits hear noises from area C7. So that says C7. When I drank Banking Hall over, it should replace it. 
uh, which it does replace it, and then put C7 in. Oh, I see. No, it's because that's why. Stupid boy. It's because, yes, it's replacing it, and it's using that to put in there. Ignore me. Ignore me. Just having a brain fart. Uh, occasional clatter of cockery, crockery, and angry goblins arguing over whether the dishes need cleaning. They're goblins. They don't need cleaning. Uh, the goblins aren't keeping watch through these arrow slits but if the characters make a good deal of noise the goblins will come and look and if they see intruders outside the goblins shout an alarm which is all good um so this is what i mean about the noise and stuff like that i do want to see if i can find some goblin noises and i might do that immediately after this video and see what we can find okay right so that was fairly straightforward um, and the only one, the other one I said I did want to do before ending this video is Area 11, um, which again, is fairly simple, not an awful lot in here, a bit like me. <laughs> uh, bold that. Okay, so tower is almost completely collapsed, although the ground floor still has open space. Rotting crates and ancient barrels show provisions were once stored here. A heavy curtain obscures the area to the south and an intact door leads east. To the north, a short passage through the rubble ends before a screen of canvas. So if you're not familiar with this, this bit here is actually um, some canvas that's hung over the hole. It's covered in dust and, and um, small stones and things. From the outside, it looks like it's part of the ruined wall and you can't get in from there. Um, so from the outside, yeah, it, it, you can't see the hole. From the inside, it's quite clear that it's a piece of canvas, um, which is why they put it in the description. So they don't need to disguise it from the inside. Um, but of course, players absolutely could come in through this way. So Dusty Canvas hides the northern entrance to this area, blending with the surrounding stonework. A character succeeds on a perception check. Let's stick that in. Um, skill ability equals wisdom. Skill equals perception. DC 15. Um, check spots the footpath leading. Uh, sorry, spots a footpath leading to the hidden entrance. Uh, if the characters actively search the outside of the castle for a hidden entrance, they can make a. Because why, not copy and paste it. Um, then this is going to be a DC ten. Uh, check to spot the hidden entrance. Otherwise, this area contains nothing of interest or value. So. Dusty canvas hides the north entrance to this area, blending in with the surrounding stonework. A character succeeds on a perception check. DC 15 spots a footpath leading to the hidden entrance. Okay. Um, if they're actively searching, uh, no, it is from the outside. So DC 15 to spot it. Um, if they're actively searching, it's a DC 10. That makes sense. Right. Good. That's done. We've got no other monsters put out for there or for here. This is a quiet part of the castle, this whole area, which is why I have had people just walk in and or sneak in and go all the way past missing out most of the rest of the castle. So I want to see if I can find some background goblin-y kind of noises for the kitchen area and possibly a couple of others. There will be plenty of places to use those kind of noises so it makes sense to get them. I'm going to go do that. What I'd really like for you guys to do is in the comments, can you um, sort of vote one way or the other? Just what's your opinion about whether our map grid is too big? Should we, let me close the journal, um, should these tokens effectively be, or rather the map grid, should the map grid effectively, of course I can't get it spot on right away. Thank you. Should the map grid effectively be that the tokens are this size, two tokens can fit in a doorway, etc. Or should it be the size we've got? So let me know what you think. I'll reset this goblin. <laughs> let me know what you think. If you think this is the appropriate size or whether you think it ought to be bigger, do we make the whole effectively, do we double the size of the keep or do we leave it as it is? Um, either way, absolutely either way it works. Uh, something else I'd like you to put in the comments is we've been looking at a couple of things to do with tokens. Uh, question for you, round tokens, like the ones we're using, 
or square tokens? Which do you prefer? Again, drop it in the comments. It'd be really interesting to see what people's opinions are. Um, I'm slowly leaning back towards um, square non-circle tokens. Um, I don't know. What do you think? What's your, what's your opinions? Tell me what you think and uh, we'll go with the flow and just, just kind of, you know, see what everybody likes. All right, I'm going to stop babbling now. Uh, next video, yep, yeah, we're going to do number 12, 13, 14, hopefully put some sounds in uh, around here and we're good to go. Thank you very much for watching and uh, I will uh, look forward to your comments. Take care. Bye-bye.